It's weak. <laughs> okay. 16.11, last section. And it really is the catch-all where we throw everything in. Kind of a potpourri, if you will. Um, uh, this section is really kind of talking about deaf ingenuity and then cultural language notes. Uh, there is a scan of a story that I will include. There's a video of the same information entitled Reveille. Um, but there are two really good stories about deaf history. And then there is a story using semantic and descriptive classifiers. And I think there are some ICLs as well in there. But um, to go through what this unit is, the first is Reveille, old wake up devices for deaf people. One of the challenges for deaf people throughout history is uh, how do you wake up in the morning if you can't hear your alarm clock? So there were lots of different ways people would go about it. Sometimes people would, you know, someone would stay awake and have to wake the other person up, sleep in shifts. Um, sometimes uh, there was someone who took a regular alarm clock and rigged it up where uh, it would drop a basically a mobile of corks and stuff onto the person as they were sleeping. So the alarm would go off, which would release it, it would drop on it, and the person would wake up. Um, the really uh, most, I suppose, storied um, uh, alarm clock was drinking a lot of water. Most of the older deaf folks that I knew growing up would say that that's what they did is when they went to bed at night, they would drink as much water as they could. And then when they woke up in the middle of the night, that's when they were awake. Hopefully it was late enough that it was, you know, close to when they had to get up for work. Um, because if you got up an hour later, you just have to start the process all over again and hope you get up in time. So it was tough. Uh, blackout curtains are a wonderful thing and a terrible thing because most of the deaf people I know kept their windows open. Then again, they weren't bothered by noise outside. So, you know, dogs barking, whatever, kids playing outside, you know, next door neighbors partying, not going to bother you unless there's flashing lights. So, um, so this story goes through talking about a whole bunch of different uh, wake up devices. And um, uh, there's another story. Well, so here, this is the one where he's talking about different devices for waking up. Um, there were, uh, there are bed vibrators. I know that sounds wrong, uh, but it's like something you literally would either clamp onto the bed frame that would shake the whole bed to wake you up, which uh, a lot of people don't like if you have downstairs neighbors. They will hate you for that because every morning is it's pretty awful. Um, uh, the uh, Another one is travel alarms. I, I don't know how you use your phone if you use the vibrate function. Um, but a lot of deaf people would use that, put it under the pillow and, you know, hope that you don't push it off to the side or roll over to the other side of the bed and then don't feel it vibrating. But as you know, you, you develop a sensitivity where once you know what your alarm is, it could be really quiet and in the corner and the moment it goes off, your brain wakes you up. So same thing can happen with vibrations as well. Um, this story, um, the woman is talking about uh, TTYs, teletype machines, for uh, the phone. And again, this is pre-internet. So this is how people would use the phone. And it's, um, the more you know about how phones work and the use of modems, uh, they have to communicate with each, other, with each other. And if you pick it up, a deaf person doesn't know as if, if there is a dial tone, if there's someone on the line. Um, I remember one time in college, a deaf friend called me and she had just gotten a kitten. I knew she left class. This was in grad school, actually. Um, she left class to pick up a kitten. She had bought a kitten. So she went to get the kitten and then I heard the, my phone rang. I answered it. I heard a kitten go and then I heard TTY sounds. So I put it down started typing and she went, hi, is this Larry? Go ahead. And I said, hi, Shelly, did you get your kitten? Go ahead. And she's like, how did you know? I'm like, cause when I picked up the phone, I heard the kitten meow and she's like, oh, darn it. She was going to surprise me. So, um, anyway, Little thing. Now, the next is, here's an introduction. This is a guy named Sam Supala. You will see he and his brother Ted pop up all the time. Um, Sam is a, uh, an ASL storyteller and ASL teacher. Um, his work is pre really heavily classifiers. 
he will tell whole stories where he's not using any vocab. It's all just classifiers. His brother, Ted, is a research scientist and who also teaches ASL. He was one of my teachers in college. Um, but he studies how the brain functions on sign language. So he and his wife, Alyssa Newport, who's a cognitive science scientist, will publish a lot of research on comparing how does the brain react? You know, here's your brain on ASL, here's your brain on English, those kind, and spoken languages. Trying to see what the differences are in the actual functions and structures. Um, so Sam here is going to introduce Ben Bahan, who is, you've probably seen him in other things. He was actually in that science lab story. And this is a pretty famous story that he tells called Ball Story. And it shows the many, many uses of semantic classifiers. He will set up classifiers to represent um, a bouncing ball of goo, um, a girl on roller skates, a boy on a bicycle, a dog, a little bird flying, an old man running, and a fat old lady running. Um, I may have missed someone, but he goes through all of these. And what you see is the sequence of them doing different things, going up a hill, going down a hill, going around a corner, going through a doorway, all those things. It's a brilliant feat for him to be able to tell this story as clearly as he does all the time. Um, but once you get the hang of what's going on, the story is clear as a bell. So here's something for you to think about. Um, you know, by all means, try to do the story, but it's a lot. Try to do one sequence of the story of them going up the hill and signing the sequence. So I love this story. I show it in a lot of my classes for a lot of different reasons. It's a really good story to be aware of. Um, and that is unit 16. Really, it's a catch-all of stuff that we've gone over already in ASLs 1 and 2. And it sort of caps off 3 to get ready for 4. What I like about this story specifically, when we're looking at the portfolio at the end of ASL 4, is if you can incorporate some aspects of using these classifiers, setting up a couple of classifiers and showing how they work. Um, if you like exercising and you like going out running or taking your dog out or going out bike riding, and you can say, my friend and I were going and we were riding our bikes and we were riding, 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 the trees, trees, riding, 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 riding. And then we went down a hill and I went down the hill and my brakes failed that really shows us that you know what you're doing with your hands. It's not necessarily something you can practice for the portfolio. And you shouldn't, you know, have scripted things to practice because it becomes noticeable if all of a sudden, oh, I've got a script here. It doesn't really answer your question. But if you can practice with how would I tell a story using classifiers, then when you get to the portfolio and someone asks a question, you're like, I can tell a story like that, but I can use classifiers. We were running. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 right. So something as simple as that shows me that you know how classifiers work. You know how location and perspective works and the actions. Okay. So um, for the portfolio, there's not really a lot of stuff to prep. Just getting used to different formats. Being used to, you know, throwing in a couple of rhetorical questions when you're telling a story, when you're answering a question, being able to throw them in so that we can see, oh, you feel comfortable inserting a, a rhetorical question or doing a topic comment sentence as opposed to subject verb object, right? So um, variety, variety and expansion are the two things you want to focus on in ASL4. So. That's why I like to like highlight the stuff in 16 because it's good review.